Today's Captain's Blog, I guess. <laughs> Today's Captain's Blog was brought to you by Andrew DeMarsh. Thank you, Andrew. So people will be able to log into the website and drive that around the lobby and see what's up. Pretty nice. Yep. Yeah, I was showing you my... So I had never really played with any radio control before. But I thought since I'm getting this thing that I may want to you know, hook radio control onto it. Remote so control I, when somebody else is sitting on it, right? Or when I'm sitting in it and just be able to get out and just... <laughs> it just keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me see. This is what I want my dealie to look like. I want it to look like the Cyclops, which is something from Road and Track. But Interesting. I have, okay, right here. Strand Beast. RC Strand Beast? You need to see this. So my wife has told me that what she really wants me to do is build a set of these legs that are big enough that we could have we could sit there in the middle. And, and um, actually, people have done that. They have, they have. I, but that's where. So I, because this was, I got the kit and I put it together the way you're supposed to. And you blow on the fan and it goes. Yes. And then what the, these are is these really tiny continuous rotation servos Service, yep. and the, a really cheap the CT6 uh, controller yeah 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 no I saw that yeah that's that's way way overkill oh yeah but it's, Wait, it's sweet oh, it, oh it's cool it's cool as I'll get out that's, <laughs> that has got to be about as cool as it is no I I can you know yeah, oh, this guy is just a genius. Did you see that little, did you see that little thing? That, no. This thing here. What is it? It's a, it's, it's like a, a camper or a one person like living module or something like that. And it tips, and it, it, it tips on. Oh, so when you go to sleep, it just yeah, lays down? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah, see, look, see this? Yeah. Okay. It's I guess like a cement mixer. You lay Bob on there to dump it. Interesting. <laughs> That's weird, but I like it. Welcome to the weird. Oh, thank you. Chris, you need to see this. I know that like taking video of a computer screen is about the oh, least cool. cool thing in the world, but that is pretty cool. You should build that. He's gonna build that. I don't need to build it. When the jars on your shelf make your friends hit themselves, that's amore. You should take that home. That's the last one. We've got some little ones over there, but that's the last of the big ones. So this is the Nerd Surplus Sale. Mm -hmm. There's three priorities. One, make space. So everything's cheap, everything's cash, get it out of here. And you, you buy in bulk and save. Um, <laughs> priority two is to make friends. About 70% of the people that come here are becoming a member. Because if you're shopping in this, you're a nerd. You're one of us. Yeah, just make you accept it. And priority three is to make money. That's the lowest priority. So everything's in cash because you can't haggle with a credit card. It's no fun. And it's just find whatever interests you, put it on the brown table over there, and we'll work it out from there. But about 90% of the room's on set. So just if it doesn't have a price tag on it, don't worry about it. Just put on shelf. Have fun. You know, but on the side, like on my little gadget. Go for Chris. I think it's 120 degrees. Surplus? You know, change. So you got the three legs and they're all 120 degrees out of, mm -hmm. out of phase yeah. with each other. So, and, they get it, and it makes it real smooth. So I got, I got to have the legs, but because you got that much support under you, they don't have to be.
Hi, what's up? Don't stir, man. Another fun filled day. Spreading love and sunshine everywhere I go. Is that the same for you last week? Yeah, they had these machines that wash them. Oh. It's really? Really awesome. <laughs> Damn. It's better than television. Oh, okay. What's television? Uh, it's, a, it's a medium. It's a thing. It's neither rare nor well done. Yep. Getting, getting going along on here. Can I show you these? Somebody, some nice guy on the internet has got a whole website full of uh, copied instruction manuals from very old equipment. Cool. Yes. I forgot the name. But if anybody runs into them, kick them a buck. Because <laughs> Smithsonian is not going to do this for you. But this is the... Uh, it's nice. It's got the uh, threading index. So that... So it's all in the, the oh, lid too. Of, that makes sense. I think there were more. What the hell happened? No, that's that's what there were. What? Okay. Is that one zip tie? Okay. Dumper. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. It's nickel coated copper. No, that's magnesium, isn't no, it's it? Not. It's nickel coated copper. Yeah. That's kind of weird. Looks but like it's not magnesium because Mitch is like, hey, it's magnesium. He's like, no. No, it doesn't feel right. Yeah, yeah, put on spots tumper. where you can see in the way it's green. That's yeah. Definitely yeah, put on tumper. We'll see what it does. Okay. Magnesium is not green? No. And magnesium is a lot it's stiffer it, it, than it, that. It, it, this it is really malleable. Yeah, but uh, it turns bright white when you rub it real fast. Really, really, really fast. fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we just put. How many megawatts into it? 144. 144 megawatts through it. That number's wrong, by the way. It's more than that, but I haven't memorized the new ones, so I'm still using the old numbers. It's actually significantly more powerful than we've been telling people, but we just found that out. So every time I give that demo, I'm lying to people. Yep. Because the numbers are wrong. We could just say I'm being very conservative. There's nobody down here. I don't know where they are. They're not down here. There were customers down there a minute ago. They went off to eat lunch, come back. They're all gone. No crew down there. Nothing. Where's Mitch hiding? Robotics. Nope. That was my guess. Nope, he's not there. The customers aren't there either. I think, I think Mitch is burying them in the backyard, perhaps. That's what I'm going with. What you need? Oh, this is gonna be a thing. What you need? I wanted to show you they came back and finished the flowers. Who did? The Girl Scouts. These Girl Scouts? Yes. You did the flowers? Yes. You guys are cool. And there's some over there. There's flowers over here. What kind of flowers are they? Pink and purple. <laughs> they're, they're pink and purple. I'll bet Mom knows. I like this one. This is kind of neat. I don't know what that is, but I like that. You guys did this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, good job. We did that too. Uh, and over here? And yeah, over here? A little white fence. How about that? You guys are pretty cool. You made flowers. You are going to fall and break your head. <laughs> nah. I'm a professional. Oh, well, you're a professional. <laughs> so you call and be like, I need you to come to the front door. And I'm thinking, do I need backup? Well, cool. Good job, girls. Thanks. I just wanted to share. Well, cool. I like it when it's good news. It's good news. Cool. <laughs> You're kind of weird. I'm an authority on that. I'm a professional at being weird. <laughs> the kids are weird. 
Yeah. Okay. So you know. Here, I'm gonna hand that off to you. Okay, you gotta show me how to do that. How do you do that? Yeah. Can I try? Sounds bad. It's not so bad. My Oh my God. Hi. You know what I used to do? I used to teach little girls like you how to do gymnastics. Long, long time ago. That's how I learned how to do stuff like that. That's how I learned how to do that. Get the front door. Yeah, if I have to. Can we do gymnastics classes today? Who wants to learn tumbling? I already know how to tumble. Tripods and bipods for everybody. And next week, somersaults. Yeah, I'm trying that. Yeah? My somersault is like this. No, 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 no. Put, put your thumb in <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Thank you. It depends on what you want to do. No, 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 no. Stop. Get back. Upright. Upright. Here. Okay. Put your hands on the bar. Put your hands on the bar. Thumb, thumb over, thumb in. I go thumb, thumb like this. Okay. Come on over here, away from the steps. Okay. Now put your hands wider than your shoulders. Okay. Now hang from your arms. Hang from your arms and bring your legs up through the middle. Okay? Yep, yep, yep. Yep. And now, move your knees a little bit further apart. Like that. Now bend your legs. Now let go of your hands. There you go. See? You did it! And then I do this. <laughs> now, 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 let your arms hang a little. No, hold on to your arms. Hold on to your arms. And then pull your legs up and then back through. You can do this. There you go. And you nailed the landing. Good job. Alright, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go sell things with her plus now. Alright? You are awesome. Thank you, kids. Come on, girls. I'm not just a high voltage guy, I'm actually the president and founder of the Geek Group. This is everything here is my fault. Um, and this is my life's work. I've been doing this for 22 years. And every week, we invite anybody who wants to, to come in, tour the entire building, see every lab in the joint, and afterwards, I sit right here in front of all the people who come, whether it's uh, about a dozen people like this week, or like 60 like last week, or two like next week. It, there's no rhyme or reason to do it at all. But right now, I'm on that camera over there, you can see behind me. And we are broadcasting via one of our three television stations here over IPTV, which means any human on Earth with an internet connection and the desire to see can tune in. And they can hear everything I say in that microphone right there. Also, Melissa is sitting in the back with a camera that will go out and this entire clip will be broadcast unedited in its entirety to YouTube tonight. And you get to ask me absolutely anything you want. There are no rules to this. There is no possible way I can prepare for it. I have no notes. I have no net. I'm on live television, and YouTube has a painfully long memory. <laughs> the reason we do this is because the Geek Group is ardent in our resolve to teach people logic, reason, and critical thinking, and to teach people that it's very important to ask questions and demand evidence, because that's the only way we make the world a better place, and because someday you're going to vote. And that matters a great deal to me. So it's my job to teach the younger generation to bring truth to power and to ask questions and demand evidence. So you guys get to ask anything you want of the president of a national nonprofit organization. Because if I can teach you that you can do this, you will start asking the uncomfortable questions to other presidents of national nonprofit organizations, and you should. Because there are millions of people that donate billions of dollars and have no idea where it goes or why, and that bothers me. This is my little way of sticking it to the man and ruining the game for everybody else. So what do you want to know? What's your energy bill look like? Oh, God. <laughs> have you ever seen a $50,000 electric bill? No. I have. <laughs> I can show you one. Um, our average energy bill a month is three to $5,000, but our record is, I think, 47 and change. That's it. You know the thing all over the news about consumers screwing people over and doing weird things with the billing and estimation and all that? We're a really big part of why. <laughs> Next question. Go. Do you guys have any, ever cause any 
issues like power outages or anything? Not here. Okay. We did at my house in Kalamazoo. We fired <laughs> off a, a uh, 10 or 15 kVA Tesla coil. Um, we were we were throwing like 10 foot arcs in the driveway. I got to meet all my neighbors. <laughs> um, our biggest screw up here was a gas leak. Was that which, a fire from a no, we didn't get fire from it. Um, we we had a fire here, but that, that was years after the gas leak. The fire here was when I melted down the world's most powerful Tesla coil. That was that was a bad day. Oh, um, that sixty thousand dollars damage. Um, and insurance came in and said, you had a fire in a high voltage lab. Good luck, kid. <laughs> um, but the worst we ever did here was we had a gas leak. Uh, we had a volunteer cut a gas line thinking it was, he was taking out the old steam heat system. And the line was labeled steam. The line was gas. They evacuated a three block radius of Leonard in the middle of the afternoon. That was bad. We got to meet all of our neighbors, and I gave away a lot of free computers. But uh, now everybody, everybody knows us, and they're, they're cool. Our, we've had an amazing reception from the neighborhood. We've been here five years, and we've got a really solid reputation. I like it. Next question. You guys are all quiet. He's, he's got the spirit. There's no rules to this. You can ask, I've gotten boxers or briefs. You can ask anything you want. Are you going to create the Flash at some point? The Flash for doing the uh, superhero. From doing all this stuff. Given the amounts of electromagnetic radiation, ionizing radiation, and interesting things we play with here on a daily basis, I'm either going to get superpowers or die from some really cool cancer. It's going to be one or the other. Uh, like we, we do a demo with a Geiger counter on uh, how evolution works and stuff like that. It's really fun. And I'm, I'm amazed that by now I haven't grown wheels or something. Just give it a copy. I'm trying. Any other questions? Go. Yeah. Um, what What is your ultimate goal with all of this? I mean, it sounds like education. Want to build a campus? Yeah. Largely, yeah. It's a big part of its education, and it's education backwards from everything you've ever been taught. Like all of you, your whole lives have been taught backwards. The educational system that you grew up in is based on a system hundreds of years old. It goes back to Prussia. It was invented by the Prussians. And it's really great if you want to build factory workers. Good Soviet workers. And the whole system that you know is sit down, shut up, we're going to push things into your brain. So that you can memorize them and pass them out. Yay! That's how we built the world. But it's backwards. And all of you know this, and I'm going to prove it. How many of you have smartphones? Okay, raise your hand. See, everyone's got a smartphone. When you bought your smartphone, the day it arrived, it came in a box, and in the box was a little tiny book, as thick as my finger, right? A little book. How many of you sat down and studied the book and read the entire book? Not one of you. How many of you got to shut up, you're weird? <laughs> He's one of us. <laughs> How many of you took it out, had a shiny new toy, barely waited to get it charged, and started playing with it and figuring it out? See, that's, yeah. At that moment, you had an amazing thing. I'm going to show you what that is. You were disqualified from this, but he's not one of you, he's a member. But watch. If I take this out. Now, we've all been taught that you are all beautiful, unique, individual little snowflakes, right? Especially in his generation. I am going to make two radical, generalized statements about all of you, which absolutely cannot possibly be true because you cannot take a group of people who are boys and girls and from five to fifty and just guess and say anything because there's no possible way you have that much in common. Watch this. None of you know what this is, do you? There's statement one. Not one of you knows what this is. Anybody want to guess? Now, that feeling you got when you got your shiny new cell phone and wanted to figure it out, you're having that right now. Yeah, go. No, you're, you're on the right path, but it is not like an iron lung or anything. Now, here's my second radical generalized statement. You don't know what this is, but you want to, don't you? See? That's it! Right there! That's the whole damn ticket, man! At that moment, right now, you have a sincere, passionate desire to learn. This is a gas meter. Same as the little brown box, in the, or the little gray box on the side of your house. In fact, this one dates from 1961. This is nothing more than a simple gas meter, and you've seen thousands of them in your lifetime. And all of you probably have one on the side of your house. 
and you've never bothered to look inside because you'll go to jail if you do. By the way, if you take a gas meter and take it out of the box and put it in a clear plastic box and put it on display in front of thousands of people a month, you get to meet all of the lawyers for DTE, and they do not like me. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. Because I'm not actually breaking any laws, but I make a lot of them uncomfortable. And that tells me I'm doing it right. But this is a gas meter. And that thing, that moment, that sincere, passionate desire to learn is the most precious thing you will ever have in your life. Because once you figure out it's not gods that make this stuff, it's just nerds, it's engineers, you realize that you have the power to make anything you can imagine. That's what this whole place is about. It's educational, but it's your education. You come here and build what you want to build and learn what you want to learn and study what you want to study at the pace that works for you. If you were the kid that back in fifth grade when the whole class is reading, you're two pages ahead and they call on you and you're like, oh shit. Yeah, that's us. You don't have to learn at the lowest common denominator because you're not stupid. You can do anything you want. The entire motto of this building is, how hard can it be? <laughs> really, it's not even rocket science. It's not rocket science. It's not that hard. You can do this. And this building is filled with more tools right now that you can use today than Home Depot has for sale. The whole idea here is access. The membership in this building last year, and for years before that, was 40 bucks a month. That made us the cheapest makerspace in America. And because of that, as of New Year's this year, we changed from being a makerspace to we met the requirements to be a national science center. We are way bigger than a makerspace. And we cut the price in half. We could have doubled it and still been fine. And it would have been a fair price. You go to the other makerspace in town, their full membership is 500 bucks a month. Here, it's 20 bucks a month. We cut it in half because my job is to help you realize that the only thing between where you are now and you starting your own multi-million dollar company and inventing the next big thing, whatever that may be, is the bullshit excuse that you keep telling yourself. And that's all it is. It's bullshit. It's dumb. You don't have anything holding you back. You're smarter than you think you are. You're capable of more than you think you are. And it doesn't matter if you're your age or your age. You're not dead! <laughs> you have nothing to be afraid of. You might make a mistake. You might break a knuckle. Okay, stupid hurts, we go on with our day. There's no reason on earth you can't learn how to run a 3D printer or a giant team you see machine. You can do this. And I want to help you do this. And you can learn how to weld and drive forklifts and invent one of these and do all kinds of cool stuff. You can make your own video games. How many people have video games with some at home, like a Nintendo or a Sega? How many people, how many games you got? Okay, just call it out. How many games you got? Ballpark. Like 20 games? Huh? Dozens of games? You know how many I got? 7,600 games. All of the old school 80s arcade games that you remember dumping ridiculous amounts of quarters into are in there. 7,600 games. It's a main cabinet. You can make that. That's a crappy old computer and a junk television and some parts off eBay. That's it. You can make that. You can have the ultimate arcade system in your basement, and it doesn't need quarters. But you can make it need quarters. It's an excellent way to have a savings bank. Okay, you need a kid to have a piggy bank? <laughs> I got a way to get him to put quarters in a thing. You can build this stuff. And that's why we're here. Any other questions? Um, go. I wish we could sell the free printer. I mean, what's the Stratasys back here? But that's, that's a lie. The Stratasys can make something 12 by 12 by 12. Right? And all the little ones are usually 4x4x4, four by four by four, right? But that's not what you're limited to. If you're clever, I have had people, I have kicked them in and you made an entire Iron Man suit. You just make it one piece at a time and you sand it and glue them together. Um, one of our best demos, and we print them on the, on the uh, Phineas, which is 4-inch four, four cube, right? One print, one, one unit, it's a rocket this high, that works. Because you print the rocket in five pieces, all in a cube, you break them apart and you snap them together. Like that, you get a rocket this high. You stuff a little Estes model rocket engine up its butt, and, and they fly, and they work! One step! Done in one, they're great. So how big it can print, doesn't really matter anything. You gotta try it. Um, so I'm interested in building a car. Uh, cool, we have a particular size. Yeah. Uh, I guess, what can store, would I pay extra for storage? Yes. Oh. You know why? 
Because if I don't, the parking lot turns into a junkyard in the weekend. Guess how I learned this lesson? It's not stupid expensive, but it's it's priced at the perfect point where if you're working on it every day and you're making it happen or at least a couple days a week, it's totally cool and reasonable. But if you just leave it there for a summer, you're going to sell that car and pay the bill. That's, it's that fair balance of things. And there's the hoist rates are really cheap. Um, but we had, to, like, you can reserve it on the website. But that way people don't just book a weekend on the hoist when they only need it for two hours. If you need it for a weekend, cool. And we have guys that do. Um, but it's, there's Jesse Pommen, who was the guy that called on the phone when I was in the thing. Jesse is uh, the guy who owns the vehicular sciences lab, and he can help you with any of that stuff. And if you're into, like, you just want to learn about other cars, we have all kinds of projects where we get together and work on a vehicle. Right now we're doing a boat um, and an electric car. And by electric car, I don't mean like, hey, we took an old Yugo and we put a forklift motor. No, we have a Lotus. <laughs> we have a Lotus that's free. Yeah, and it's going full electric. So, and you can come here and say, that's cool, I'm gonna help. Okay, come out, let's do stuff. It's gonna be weird with the kid in the way, but you know, it'll be fine. <laughs> I just have a mental picture of him under the Lotus. Stop moving. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. So here's what you need to know. Today we have the surplus sale going on. It's happening downstairs. Prices are ridiculous, and I have a room full of stuff you don't even know you need. Okay. And this ranges from like laptops for 50 bucks to creepy things in jars. If you need a Mori heel in a jar, I got your hookup. Um, giant speaker cabinets, hydraulics, electronics, all kinds of fun stuff to take home and build things with, or build things with here. And we're do we do the surplus sale every year because we get more stuff than we have space. If you're interested in becoming a member, you go right over there and you talk to that gentleman right there. No, you're getting it today, Squeak. You're, you've been hauling toll. You're going to sit there. You get members. So you go over there and you talk to them. It's 20 bucks to be a member. It's stupid. Are there any other questions? Oh, I'm not sure what's there. Like, every Saturday or all week? All week. It's until we run out of stuff, which could be tomorrow, it could be a week from now. There's no rhyme or reason to it at all. Yeah. You have access to the uh, free print software. Uh, yeah. yeah. You can you can sit down and it's beyond that. We have a God class license for every Autodesk product ever made. You can sit down right there and use three hundred thousand dollars worth of software all day long for twenty bucks a month. And there's no hourly charge to that or anything. You can sit there all day, every day, rock out. Yeah, go. I assume the twenty dollars that, that that's per person. It's not like a family thing. Family right? membership is way more expensive. It's thirty bucks. Oh, I know, yeah. right? Yeah. And, yeah. and and that's everybody in your house. Okay. If if you have people in your house that live there that you aren't actually related to, live with it. They're your family. Okay. We're we're it's a rock and roll kind of environment. Nice. We're really laid back about stuff. The only rules here that we really enforce are. Fundamental stuff like don't be a dick to other people and clean up your own mess. Just basic safety stuff. Um, because, like, watch, is there anybody in this room that does not understand the concept that if you drill a hole through your hand with the drill press, it's going to hurt really, really bad? See? What? I know. Stupid hurts. It's a system that works. I, I spend a lot of money every month for five insurance companies and big angry lawyers because we live in a world that is controlled by lawyers and insurance companies. This is dumb. Your generation taught us that the kid that eats too many marbles doesn't grow up to have kids that eat too many marbles. My generation decided to outlaw marbles. I think that's dumb. <laughs> and, and we live in a world, and this is something I battle every day. We have a whole generation right there that is being taught they can't be trusted with power tools. They can't be trusted because they might get hurt. You know, oh my god, you have to protect the wee precious children. They might get hurt. Ooh, let them get hurt. <laughs> That's how this works. Stupid hurts. Hot stove looks just like a cold stove. You touch it once, you'll figure it out. You won't do that again. That's my job. Because if we don't, we're going to get a whole generation that can't be trusted with responsibility and power to us. That bothers them. This is a place where they can come and make mistakes and get a little hurt and not get big hurt because we trust them with power to us. And it's, you're, you're going to, you know, you learn to use a wrench, you're going to scrape your knuckles. You're going to bleed a little. Okay, I did. He did. He came out all right. <laughs> wow. I mean, yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I work with high voltage. So, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? I 
think we've made about $4,000 so far. The prices are really cheap. Like, almost everything down here is $1, $5, $10, $20, $50. So like 1000 items. Oh yeah, easy. Like, we have people come here and they show up at their truck in 300 bucks and we fill the truck. Bring a little cash in a big truck, we'll fill it. Like, if you need equipment racks, those are custom made equipment racks back there. I got a couple right here. I'm selling these for 20 bucks a piece, take them home. Everybody needs to agree. You can have the best stereo on the block. So, membership over there, surplus down there. Thank you all for coming. I'm headed downstairs. By the way, it's 20 degrees cooler in surplus. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We don't have the ones, the corners. If you need to know about connects, you want Mr. Bellatini. Yeah, okay. Well, can you just make sure we have everything? We're connecting. We're connecting. Converting motion. I don't think I've given him quite enough direction yet, but okay. we're learning. No. <laughs> So do you know the name of the guy who sold the Eiffel Tower for scrap twice? Oh, God, I've heard the story like six times, I should know it. Andrew DeMarche. Frenchman sold the Eiffel Tower for scrap twice. Now you know. Andrew DeMarche. That's the guy. Yeah. The way he got, uh, got away with it the first time was he made it clear that this was shady. Do the fact that he was, you know, he's going to do a kickback with the person he bought it from. They were going to, um, he's going to choose them if they give him some money back. Okay. So, you know, they were willing to bid a little bit more. So, when it happened and the guy ran away, the people didn't want to immediately go to the government saying, this is the guy I was working with, this is what his deal was, because... Self-implication and, and looking like an idiot, so, yeah. yeah. So welcome back from Europe. Where did you go? Went to Dusseldorf, and then Roermond, and Dusseldorf again, and then Paris. And then home. And then home. And you and still Detroit. haven't slept. <laughs> and then Detroit, yeah. <laughs> Great cities of the world. Paris, Detroit. It's the Paris of the West. <laughs> it's really not. It's what it's called. <laughs> I haven't spent much time in Detroit. So I can't uh, make a statement on that. Oh, Sam? Today's captain's blog. With today's captain's blog, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> today's captain's blog was brought to you by Andrew DeMarsh. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> oh, by the way, have you seen my Facebook in the past two days? No. Okay, I didn't, I didn't think so. You're in for a fun read. Read my Facebook from yesterday or the day before. There's a post about, I have the heart of a small boy. You have to read this. All right. And don't let anybody give it away for you. Where are you keeping this heart? It's down in surplus. It still oh. hasn't sold. But, um, which is funny, because I've sold almost all the other ones. But the, the one that, this ad, I wrote an ad for a thing. A woman commented on it. And I wrote one of the greatest responses you will ever read in a Facebook post. All right. So just. Sit down for 10 minutes and read it. So it's Victor Lustig. What's the name of the guy? Victor Lustig. Victor what? Lustig. Lustig? Lustig. Okay. You sure it's not Andrew DeMarsh? Because I heard it was Andrew DeMarsh. Besides selling half a tower, I'm sure he would be You guys have fun. That's today's captain's blog. Today's captain's blog, I guess. <laughs> Today's captain's blog was brought to you by Andrew DeMarsh. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs>